Good evening, and Maxi Canada. Shukran to Iraq. And we are back with our new episode of our program, Voice of Canada, which is a weekly popular talk show, which has been produced by Awas TV Entertainment. My today's co-host is Kamini Singh, Hello. my longtime colleague, yes. and my two distinguished friends, Madhulm Rogi and Gada Hamadani. We are known to each other for more than five years. Our friendship is long outstanding, mm -hmm. but at the same time, each one of us does a different role in our community, representing their own communities. So we welcome to our show, Voice of Canada. Uh, thank you, Asmaniyar, and thank you, Kamini. It's a great pleasure to be here with you tonight at this show. Well, as you mentioned, we've been friends for uh, quite a long time, actually. We did a lot. Uh, together in many so, fields, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, introduce thank you. yourself, thank you, your Mr. name, and for inviting us to this uh, nice show just to explain whatever is happening in our country, Iraq, and our uh, organization, Iraqi Components Charity. Very good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, so warm welcome again as a co-host of this show today. I welcome you guys to the show. And we'll start with uh, moving ahead with the question. So first one for you, Gada. I'll just go by the books today. So uh, my first question to you is, you are the CEO of uh, Iraqi Components Charity. So what role your organization plays and what are its vital function from your base in Canada here? Okay, um, well, CAMI is like as any mm -hmm. other, you know, charity organization, the role for the CEO is like we oversee mm -hmm. the, um, the operations. Okay. And before that, you know, it's like we try to, uh, to promote what we have, our mm -hmm. goals, our aims, um, and try to always, you know, make sure that the deliverable, deliverables actually mm -hmm. are delivered. All right. So that's the main uh, role. Okay. For the charity, mm -hmm. Uh, this charity is, uh, is uh, to serve Iraqi components. Right. And we are actually for different fields. We, it's not only for Iraqis, but the, the Middle Eastern communities. Okay. Uh, everybody is Everybody. Canadian because okay. we're Canadian, uh, you know, it's like before and above everything else. It just happened that the communities, you know, it's like they're coming from different backgrounds and mostly Iraqis. We have different. So when we when we had the board of this charity, mm -hmm. we came from different backgrounds. Right, so that's okay. why we get the name. It's Iraqi yeah, Components. No, that's where the Iraqi comes yes. from. And the, yeah. Now my second right. question is for our senior Madlum Marogi. You yes. being the CFO of your Iraqi Component charity, yes, what role do you play here in Canada as well as in the Middle East? Because you often visit Iraq. Yes, sir. On a goodwill mission. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, our charity uh, established uh, in uh, nine, uh, 2013, mm -hmm. uh, just helping our people, the Iraq, first of all, Iraqi Christians. And then we changed to, to all components, uh, Iraqi components, mm -hmm. like Kurdish, Arab, uh, Chaldean, Syriac, Assyrian, all the components of our our Iraqi, uh, you know, national. So and after after you know, uh, 2014 when ISIS uh, invasion to uh, Sinjar and uh, Mosul and Nineveh plain, mm -hmm. we we uh, we got you know many uh, a member of parliament go and uh, we went to to Iraqi Kurd Kurdistan region government mm -hmm. and we uh, visited our camps there our displaced people camps around 150,000 people wow. were Christians and mm -hmm. uh, 600 uh, Yazidis people were in uh, in Kurdistan region government very good go so thank you for letting the viewers know about the good work you're doing in the community so again, the next question is related to your organization. Any one of you can answer. Mm -hmm. So basically, we spoke about the function, Gada. So now, 
every organization have a mission like you know they you start, when you set up an organization you have a mission vision your objectives right what so, are the vital objectives yeah okay and also i would be interested or the viewers will be interested to know how what where did you get the like where did the name come from the iraqi component okay. Yeah. Like yeah. That. okay uh, as mr madloum just mentioned actually yeah. uh, the organization before i joined the organization they were serving only christian at okay. that time uh -huh. uh, but then you know it's like in about 2000 we sat together and mm -hmm. i was invited to chair the organization okay. and we decided that while we're coming from different background right uh, so let's put the name that you know suits everyone. Okay. So that's why we get the Iraqi components because okay. you know some of us are Kurd, some of them, some of us are Christian, some okay. are Muslim, some mm -hmm. are different. You know, it's like the Yazidis. There's different mm -hmm. segments of yes, communities. Yeah. Okay. So that's why that's where the name came from. Okay. Before that, as I said, I had the Women Development Group. Oh. So yeah. my passion is to serve children and women. Wow. That's mainly, mm -hmm. and we realize, you know, as uh, Mr. Madlou mentioned, mm -hmm. when we had the crisis of ISIS, that's mm -hmm. where we went to Iraq together with member of parliaments, and we were helping. So we realize it's not only, you know, it's like women, children, mm -hmm. although they were the most affected, they are the most affected, exactly. uh, yeah. and we have the seniors as well. Right. So we're serving all segments, regardless, mm -hmm. depends on the severity, okay. you know, and the vulnerability right. of the. Uh, of the group right uh you can inform our viewers of voice of canada that your organization seems to be pretty infant you all established in august of 2021 mm -hmm. and made it into iraqi component charity so and and at the same time i saw that your project is a very wide gigantic project so what is the stage currently in 27 months what you have achieved and what you plan to do and how fast it will be operational okay so for that project as you said you know like I, as we said we have two stages now this iraqi components uh, that was the major project we were working on we were blessed that kurdistan government they gave us a three buildings that each of them worth more than five million dollars yeah. okay. so we were blessed that we have that part and what we're getting is to get an operation so that project is not only for renovation the buildings mm -hmm. because we are building departments to educate these children there is educational there is health care mm -hmm. and we're going to have smaller projects we're going to help them you know up until they graduate and then after graduation from high school we'll help them with a small funding mm -hmm. to go to university or to start their own projects oh. so we are at that stage we have some money okay. we don't have much you know it's like we haven't reached the two million mm -hmm. yet but we're starting that you know it's like uh, we put the goal but that didn't stop us mm -hmm. from keep serving the communities there especially because they are they went through a lot and right. it seems up until now mm -hmm. it's never you know ending okay. story yeah. yeah thank you six so yeah so it's, it's very interesting to know about your plans and from what you shared that i can we can understand that you really have a well set up plan and you have your mission vision set up now this kind of work that you have in plan like definitely it requires money like funds is one of the funding. important components a big funding so is required what are your plans how are you going to manage your funds? Like, what are your plans for okay. that? Uh, we rely on donors, you know, generous donors, and yeah. we have some generous donors in Canada, actually. That's great. But mainly, it's yeah. us, it's uh -huh. from the community, and mm -hmm. we've been doing this for a while. Uh -huh. It's, you know, when the government brought the Yazidis, we realized mm -hmm. that they were not well taken care of. Mm -hmm. So they were always calling us for help. And we've been doing this here, mm -hmm. you know, on the ground. So actually, we, we're well established that we can rely on ourselves mm -hmm. and on our communities to help the community in and outside Canada. Okay. And we have uh, our slogan, it's a break for life. Okay, I'm coming to that question okay. in detail. So that's where we uh, raise funds as well. So yeah. definitely you want to appeal to the, like, because the viewers are watching you, you want the community to come forward and help the organization yes. as much as possible, right? It's giving back to the community in a good way. Yes. Indeed, your slogan is very, very powerful and strong. Buy a brick and save a life. Exactly. So exactly signify what do you mean by that? 
and how we are going to generate it's a repeated question so such huge funds it has any government from the Middle Eastern country has pledged any or any big donor has pledged any amount for funding of this gigantic project? Uh, no, we are not actually. We are taking funds from private sector. We are individuals. We are mm -hmm. from here mostly. It's us actually. Okay. Mr. Madlum knows he's the CFO uh -huh. and he's the one who gets the fund from the community internally. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, the slogan is very powerful you know, slogan. Yes, yeah, but to implement, it needs lots of funds. Yes, yeah, that's true. But we have a stages. It's not uh, a single phase project. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna go on stages. Right. Okay, go so ahead. it's it's mainly you will be dependent on the donations, like you know your yes. your donations from the community, right? Yeah. Yes. Plus, you will be needing funds for servicing the project. Yes. Yeah. Continuous servicing because of the it's project. Because it's five years of project, uh -huh. the, you know, up until we are fully operational, and after that, it's going to be forever. Hopefully, yes. that's what we are yes. hoping for. Yeah, the initial stage is always the, the tough hardest, to the toughest, you know, the second. Wheel to start rolling. That's true. But I, it seems like um, Madlun and Gada, you already have things figured out and you have a good team work there. So maybe we just spoke about the overall plan. So can we go into stepwise, like, you know, what you have planned out? Do you have some outlines of um, the work that you're, the projects that you were talking about? Initially. Yeah, you that? know what, uh, <clears throat> last two, three years, because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. came out to the, all over the world. So we couldn't we couldn't approach our our hopefully uh, implement our, yeah yeah exactly and uh, you know uh, before I I was going to Iraq to Kurdistan region government to visit our people our camps there Yazidis and the Christians and Kurdish from Nineveh Plain but uh, after after 2019 right now. We didn't. We okay. couldn't go there okay. because of COVID-19. Right. But before that, mm -hmm. after after ISIS uh, invasion to Mosul and Nineveh plain, we went many many times there okay. just to. We got uh, medicine and food mm -hmm. for those camps and uh, clothes mm -hmm. because you know what? Just let me tell you something. The old people mm -hmm. in the camps, you know, under under the sun, the heat, heating sun and the very cold weather there, uh, the old people and the kids are dying because there is less medicine mm -hmm. and less clothes yeah. because of the cold weather there. So the, we are trying to get funds and to, to send them at least medicine and clothes and so and so because many many of them mm -hmm. uh, our people are are going outside of the country right. outside of kurdistan region government yeah. there is you know they are immigrating mm -hmm. and the problem is the old people they are staying there in iraq in 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 region in mm -hmm. kurdistan and the youth they are going, right. you know, outside, right. abroad. So yeah. they are approaching and many of them, they are staying in, for example, neighboring country, mm -hmm. Lebanon, Turkey, Jordan, Turkey, and the Middle so Eastern so countries. And so that's why we are, you know, we are asking our community just to, to donate. Assist them, help them. Yeah. yeah, just to go to that point. Achha. Mr. Madlum, my question is, next question is to you. Mm -hmm. You have been a representative for several years of a, a CPA, a CSAPC, mm -hmm. Chaldean Syriac Asarian Popular Council in Canada. What role did you play and how did you protect and did for the welfare of your communities from here as a representative? You know, yes, yeah. I was from uh, 2007 until 2000, uh, let's say, 18, ending of 18. I was the, the Chaldean Syriac Assyrian Council representative in Canada. Mm -hmm. So just uh, helping our people there in Iraq, 
and uh, visiting, asking the, mm -hmm. the you know, member of parliament here in Canada mm -hmm. and going to Washington to, to visit the, or to meet the congressmen. Many congressmen, just we are, we were asking about... Across the border. Yes, yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, just to, to help them and to explain what whatever is happening to them, especially after 2014 when ISIS uh, invasion to uh, Iraq. Very good. Go ahead. Okay. So moving on, uh, I know all the good work that you are doing to support the unfortunate ones back back home in your country. Now, because both of you here are Canadian citizens, right? So talk about something like you no. Know, basically for the viewers to know what is your contribution when it comes to giving back the community here in Canada. I know both of you are very active. Uh, mm -hmm. like, you know. And before you answer this question, you have understood the question. Uh, we will be taking a short break okay. and we'll be back with you as soon as possible. Welcome after the short break in our program Voice of Canada, which is a weekly talk show. My co-host today is Kamini okay. Singh, my longtime colleague and my two Outstanding friends, Gada Hamadani and Madlum uh, Morogi. Yes. So they are here with us to talk about their charities and what are all good work they do here. And now on a lighter side, we would like to switch our questions towards Canada. Yes. As we are all proud citizens of Canada. And our first and foremost duty is to our homeland as well as to our, our original native lands of origin as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, that's how we started uh, mm -hmm. before we got out, you know, uh, oh, uh, we were serving here. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned you know, like earlier, we had lots of refugees came, you know, at the time of Mr. Harper and Jason Kenny. Mm -hmm. They brought lots of Iraqis due to the crisis. We had the war. We had, you know, uh, several events were taking place. So we had community. We already have been having community here. So uh, we have to remember, you know, this community, they don't speak the language mm -hmm. and many of them are seniors, you know, with young kids, mm -hmm. they enroll in school, they get yeah. the language, they were good actually. Yeah, the comfortable. Yeah, language. but with the seniors and then we, you know, it's like we were helping. And then we had the Yazidi crisis. Um, again, you know, it's like uh, they were in and again, they needed help. So we have, it's like the, these people, they got through trauma and it's very hard even to deal with the specialist people mm -hmm. here you know to help them so we were always always you know stepping in and uh, trying to help them uh, we work not only as uh, this charity we have connection with other charities here mm -hmm. in Canada, you know, in Canada yeah. we have the Kurdish charity mm -hmm. uh, organizations actually we have you know uh, tied bones with them and we've been working hand in hand to serve uh, the communities here That's not only that you know mm -hmm. we have other communities I'm not going to mention names okay. now yeah. but we were always we've been always working all together so, oh, here to serve the yeah. community here in Canada so you believe yeah. in giving back to the community yes. we are part of, right? So, Gada, oh, yes. This question is, uh, you will be st uh, start, uh, start answering the uh, first and then later if Mr. Madlum would like to put his comments. Mm -hmm. What we see from your bio that uh, you both became into active Canadian politics in 2010 as per your bio. Yes, yes. And but prior to that, you were, you were both based in different cities of uh, GTHA. You were in Toronto, you were in Vaughan, I think, since a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that was the golden era of our right uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. That was a real golden era. But as soon as you settled down in the West End of uh, near Mississauga, we saw your visibility when the new elections were taking place. And during that time, we met also. That's true. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So, and since then, we are working hands in hands. Mm -hmm. So, give us your account of your activities here in Canada from 210 to 215. Okay. Yes, so, would you like to start or you want me to start? Yes, yeah, let me. Question for both of us. Let me. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question, uh, Mr. Aspie. You know, just uh, let me talk to you or tell you one point. When we when we went to uh, Kurdistan to visit our people, displaced people, Yazidis and uh, and the Christians, we got uh, three uh, 
members of parliament. Uh, they were sitting members, I recall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, member of parliament and, uh, you know, the the chief or the head of them was Mr. Brad Buck. Brad Buck, who is now our new councillor of yes, Ward yeah, 11. Yeah, so we went there, we went to the church there, to uh, Bishop uh, Warda. We saw many, many displaced people in all over the, the, the you know, the uh, church and the street everywhere and the bishop warda was was uh, you know giving food for them wow and you know i saw mr you know brad but he was uh, crying for them so i told him what would you do mm -hmm. so he told me i will whenever i got toronto Back Canada, to the country, yeah. i will go to stephen harper uh -huh. The second day, yes, he was he a went, sitting MP from the side of Streetsville. He went to Stephen Harper and he told him the story. So the second day, Stephen Harper and uh, uh, Jason Kenny, he was defense minister. They went there to Kurdistan and they got 10 million aid wow. and uh, food, for example, and you know whatever they need. And he sent the uh, military. Mm -hmm. to, okay. to, to Kurdistan, Canadian, uh, forces. Canadian, Canadian forces to Kurdistan. So that's, you know, Stephen Harper. Was an encouraging step. Exactly. Our former yeah. Prime Minister, yeah. right? Yeah. Honorable Stephen yes. Harper. Yeah. And yeah. that's he, why we remember his era best. of nearly a decade. Mm -hmm. He was the best Prime Minister exactly. as of today. That's true. Yeah. I would that's say. Right. I still proclaim that yes. because I was a loyalist to him mm -hmm. since a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, as for me, actually, I was in Toronto, but I was very much involved in the internal stuff. I was activist as well. Mm -hmm. So let's say when the indigenous had some demands and they were protesting and stuff, I tried to understand mm -hmm. their demands. So what were they coming from, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was pretty much involved. I'm supporting, right? And I was as well, you know, like with the schooling. Um, again, you know, I was volunteering a lot. So I'm the type that I like to volunteer. So okay, but the more, the more I know about your work, the more and more I know you, I, I really appreciate the respect for you. Really. No, thank you. So let's move on to the next question here. Um, we were talking about COVID-19 and the pandemic phase that we had and how it disrupted our life uh, overall. Uh, we are kind of uh, like back to normal. We are out of the pandemic phase, but then comes like with a new map. Huge opening. problems are on and our are heads looming now. Up, like, you know, inflation, the cost of living going up and then the gas prices are up. Then you have some small and large businesses that are shut down that didn't really come to revive. Like, you know, it's so hard. So can can you both of you anyway, like, you know, can you have like to kind of give the viewers an analysis or what is your thought about it? Like, how do people cope up with this? Issues and how yeah. to overcome this crisis. Yeah. Because we are facing severe crisis in many sectors. Right. Not only the inflation, but just currently the children drugs are not available. That's true. Yeah. And that is really a very, very panic situation. Yeah. And I know of parents who are driving up to Buffalo that's to get, the, that, get the medicines from mm -hmm. across the border. Yeah. So I request our government, our provincial health minister to look into this matter because health sector is number one priority. Mm -hmm. And especially we are the people who are compassionate Canadians who would first prefer to give first preference to our children and to women yeah, here right. in Canada. So I will really emphasize from our platform of Voice of Canada to give special attention that the drugs are easily available, which is a life-saving factor for everybody, and no parent would wish that the child should suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, as you mentioned, you know, it's like we're in deficit about half a trillion deficit. Mm -hmm. And um, this deficit has made everything expensive. Mm -hmm. And the interest we pay is, again, you know, is very high more, interest yeah. rate of interest. Can we are unable to yeah. put food on the table That's currently? That's true. You know, it's like yeah. you go to supermarkets. I ha I'm going to mention this example. I was yeah. being Definitely. a pepper today. Yeah. And I put the pepper at the scale. The one pepper was one point eight. One dollar point eight, and to it's, me it's like no, no, something wrong. I call the, mm -hmm. you know, like, the teller. Yeah. yeah, and we checked again. Mm -hmm. No, that's correct. One pepper. Mm -hmm. So if you have a family, mm -hmm. how you can how serve? can you manage? It's and exactly. I was viewing this morning on CP twenty four that mm -hmm. the vegetable prices have gone higher. 
9.2 percent. Exactly. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Can right. you believe? And the shelves are empty. Empty. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. The meat has gone up to 11 plus per percent. Yeah. The gas is 9 percent. But last uh, last month, some relief was given, mm -hmm. and the provincial government is putting the step down. But still, it's still, not affordable. No. Yes, I would yeah. say, uh, still, a person like me who is independent, a self earner, yes. cannot yes. afford a gas per liter of 150 or 160 yeah. per liter. That's so true. That's very it's true. For most of, uh, like, the, I think, I would say 70% of the population falls under that, where we have really like hand to mouth kind of you know uh, yes. thing situation cost of living going up is a is a hard time so yeah. madlon you want to share something yeah you know uh and between the period you know of covid 19 uh, our charity you know think thought uh, just to whoever which family affected the the covid 19 just we we uh, we got each family mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, credit card for fifty dollars from Walmart, wow. and and we and distributed we amongst them to, the, to them for some relief. And, yeah, around ten fifteen thousand dollars. Just we we yeah. spend with very that. good, very noble cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you said, this is not enough because no. you know, like exactly. what happened is you know they are creating they created cash, mm -hmm. and that's where we get the inflation. Right, and mm -hmm. instead of creating cash, they're supposed to create what cash can buy. buy. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, there is a huge difference, and uh, it's a crisis by it all is, means. It and you know, like we need mm -hmm. the government that's responsible, mm -hmm. even if we have to cap the government expenses, right? Because obviously, the people you know, they're they are getting paid, right? While we, like, we're business owners, yeah. actually, we lost a huge, you know, segment of our income mm -hmm. uh, due to the situation, not exactly. only to the COVID, yeah, it's to the situation. And we need a responsible government. Mm -hmm. If the current government, regardless what level are, they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. However, they're supposed to put, you know, I don't know, it's like the ministers, mm -hmm. the member of parliament, they, they should have the knowledge right. before they take that Take position. over that position, yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. that's not their place. And so they have to step down. They get exactly. the notes and uh, briefs from their ad advisors. Yeah, but obviously. Beyond. You won't believe, even in the health ministry, same yes. thing happens. Mm -hmm. There are yeah. PhDs they've employed. They write the minutes and they give them the suggestions and that are read in the assemblies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it seems there is, you know, they, something they wrong. Don't, they many have don't have basic part. knowledge yeah. of the portfolio they are holding. And that is the real sad part over here in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Gada, I would like you to throw some light on the federal carbon tax, which is okay. killing Canadians. That's true. Yeah. It has been imposed and it has been increased in every budget. Yeah. And now it is becoming a real burden on each and every Canadian. And yes. the federal government is giving us the lame excuse that they are returning the money back. But the money which comes yeah. is a peanut. That's true. That's very what true. What we pay, because we pay taxes here in Canada on every step we take. 13% we pay as service to HST, yeah. which is the highest yeah. year in Canada yeah. among the provinces. Yes. Whereas the large province of Alberta, mm -hmm. which can survive on 7 or 8 yeah. per charging 7 or 8%, right. why can't a largest province, earning province, can have 8% or 7% HST? Yes, yeah. Well, I'll go back here to my background. It's like I'm software engineer originally. Mm -hmm. I work in the uh, oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came from Middle East, obviously. Right. So, and usually when you have oil and gas sector mm -hmm. uh, nourishing, that the whole country is going to be nourished. Right. And here actually, it's like I realized that, okay, we're building a pipeline because we rely 100% on mm -hmm. the American pipeline. Right. They are renting us that to carry our product and stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, let's focus on the resources we have mm -hmm. and let's develop it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, imposing carbon tax is not going to solve the issue. You know, mm -hmm. because you're taking it from from our pocket right. to the government pocket. Mm -hmm. So what kind of government are we going to? You know, it's like it's, I'm a little bit confused. And our emission not... ratio is not that high. Canada exactly. is very clean 
at, at yes. our, you have got a very clean atmosphere as mm -hmm. compared to other major countries, yeah. Yeah. industrial yeah. countries. Yeah. Yeah. But still, mm -hmm. they are just killing us and making yes. big holes in the pockets of our Canadians. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And in reality, it's like the pollution uh, Canada produced is about 1.8 or 1.80 something, mm -hmm. 78. You know, it's like about 1.8, let's put, put it that way. Yeah. So actually, why? Okay, what the tax is going to solve? Exactly. We need to use our cars. We're in a very cold country. Mm -hmm. Okay, we cannot stop the manufacturers. No. You know, we cannot stop using our cars. Mm -hmm. So this is not a solution. No. Yeah, so actually it's like I'm with to remove all unnecessary taxes. What's the use of it? The services are getting worse. Yeah. The country, unfortunately, you know, it's like we're not as we were 20 years ago. That's okay. Yeah. It's changed. So the demographics have changed. Yes, but it's changing. And, and life, life worse. standards of life are deteriorating. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Or yeah. Canada was supposed to be a number one country in the world. The best yes. place, yes. To, best stay. place exactly. to stay. But now that thing is becoming a questionable. That's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. And I, I was away. They refused to take our Canadian dollars outside. Wow. And to me, seriously, since when our our Canadian dollar is rejected? Exactly. You know, the way I said, what to do with this? Yeah, like, even even so when I was in a Caribbean, yeah. uh, they refused to take a Canadian dollar. That's true. Uh, US dollar US is welcome, dollar. sir. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> US dollar is welcome all over yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah. That is ruling the world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate. It's very sad, you it's know? It's very sad, yeah. And and currently, look at our dollar's value, international value, has mm. gone down. It's gone down. down, yes. We are nearly yeah. minus 30% yeah. to US dollars. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. terrible. That's right. So every day we are decreasing our wealth. Yeah. And the value of our Canadian money. Yeah. So we way. need to encourage more manufacturing because we mm. have the resources. We have got no manufacturing. Yeah, we are I'm more a service industry that's true. and retailing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we don't have uh, people to work as well. We don't have workers. Yeah, so that's true. another thing. Yeah. yeah. So we have to encourage that. We have yeah. to focus on it and uh, to eliminate unnecessary regulation, unnecessary mm -hmm. taxes. Yeah. Well, Canadian and Canada deserve to be at the front. You know, mm -hmm. it's, like it's our beloved country. Right. And we deserve and the Canadian deserve all the best. L let Where me put on record once again. I repeated mm -hmm. this two, three times in my my previous interviews, mm -hmm. Canada is highest gas reserves. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. we have got gas reserves which our generations can utilize. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, Canada doesn't explore our yeah. crude oil mm -hmm. and refine into gas. We have got our refineries. For example, one Sanya refinery, which mm -hmm. is in Ontario, yeah. only uses the capacity of 33%. Okay. Why? Yeah. The questions oh, yeah. we're asking, if the if that cap, that refinery produces in full capacity, it can meet certain demand of Ontarians. Yeah. And we can keep our prices low. Actually, you know, it's like here politics is a, playing a major role because, mm -hmm. you know, some parties, mm -hmm. they are talking about green, green. Well, we can have green manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to stop. It was a disaster. Project. The last government, mm -hmm. provincial government uh, of Kathleen Wynne, they installed massive green projects all over, especially when we used to go to Windsor. Mm -hmm. It used like a jungle of yeah, green wind, energy, yeah. fans and this and, and that reality, and propellers. Like green, actually, the pollution and that they were not caused, producing anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, the pollution that causes, you know, it's like the windmills is way higher because it affects oh, us. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. feel the Their assessment yeah, was wrong. Yeah. They thought yes, we yeah. are like Amsterdam not, yeah. well, no, or Holland, politics, where no. they have got all the things. They installed like all the line, yes, a three, yeah. three, four kilometers I saw. Mm -hmm. If it was really green, you know, it's like, that's fine. Yeah. But in reality, it's not because, you know, it's like, how are we going to run it? Right. And what is generating? That's very important. Yeah. So yeah. it's just politics, the slogans. Mm -hmm. So they win the street. Well, you have to think of people you have to think of your country love canada first that's mm -hmm. how i look at it you know when you come with this uh, unnecessary stuff that means you don't love your country right. you care about yourself you care about how to get the chair mm -hmm. and this is wrong yeah. uh, let me bring again another important factor few years ago Les Gar go station bus and train station was opened right in mississauga yeah. west mm -hmm. and they had installed a huge windmill mm -hmm. which couldn't produce the power for its own station. Can you believe? Due to weather conditions, weather, and finally, uh, they, they had to uh, remove that windmill. 
Right. Which was a loss to who? Space. Taxpayers. Yes, yeah. yes, so, Taxpayer paid yeah. huge amounts right. for the wastage of funds because yeah. wrong planning. Uh, we will be taking a short break okay. and we'll be back with you as soon as possible. Sure. Welcome after the short break in our program, Voice of Canada, which is a weekly talk show. My co-host today is Kamini Hello. Singh. So we are having really interesting and very serious and interesting discussion here. Um, just to keep the time in my like enough time limited time over here. I, I would guess. like to like because we're talking about the issues that the Canadians are facing these days. I would, um, I believe this is for you. Uh, can you like we talk about houses like you know and the way the interest rate has gone up, gone up, the mortgage it's like difficult for the people. It's hard to pay the mortgages and all. So any advice in that sector, like especially for the first time home buyer, it's so hard. You can't. That is hear, impossible. You can't. That is impossible house, that right? a newcomer or first time yeah. buyer can buy. They have to stay in rent for years, God knows how many decades, yeah. here in Canada. It's very bad situation. So, yeah. so, I, so as the, I think he answered your question. You know, buying houses, it's now it's very hard to buy That's houses. Yeah. Because it's, it's uh, you know, interest rate, it's mm -hmm. more than 9%. Yeah. Yeah. So how could, we, how could the, the people buy the houses? And people are saying that we are unable to pay. So what do you want, that the people should leave their houses and leave the keys and, and go where? Yeah. And hand over the houses to the banks? Yeah, we have mismanagement, that's what it tells you. Exactly, all these yeah. are indication. Well, it's like that's my uh, professional actually, it's like project management. Yeah. So that tells you all these are indications of, of mismanagement. Yeah, the plan so, itself is not set, I would say. But, but it's we, strong, mismanagement. But yeah. we hope that we have reached the peak stage of increasing the interest. Now the even the Bank of Canada has realized that we are at its highest peak. Now the stability and balancing should be done and will come. That's what I was hearing this morning only. Mm -hmm. So let's hope for the best that soon this thing settle down, balances yeah. down and people get some relief that they are not homeless. Exactly. Yes, and yeah. you know what the, the, the main thing is, you know, the, the government is increasing taxes, mm -hmm. for example, carbon taxes, GST, HST, and uh, you know, they are not increasing the the payroll, the the no. hourly rate of the no. people. No. The no. for example, old age security. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pay even rent. Mm -hmm. Rent is going higher Our and higher. Production you know, is showing us the red light that due to paucity you know, of time, they have a live show in, in about seven minutes time. So we have to vacate the floor. Mm -hmm. So both of you can quickly give your concluding remarks. Both of and you. Preferably in your like An Arabic, Arabic message that will yeah. be better for the Middle Eastern people. Yeah. So just say a few words in Arabic, both of you, Gada and Madlum. بصراحة إحنا جدا فرحانين في هذه المقابلة السعيدة مع مستر آسفي ومسكاميني ومس غادر الحمداني اللي إحنا أنا وياها بنشتغل عدة سنوات مع بعض وبنساعد أهلنا في العراق. خصوصا بعد 2014 اللي اللي اجت الايسز الداعش وسوى هجوم على على اهلنا في سهل نينوى وسنجار والموصل والانبار وديالى اللي اخذوا ثلث مساحه العراق واحنا بنساعدهم في 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 يعني منطقه كردستان الحكم الذاتي في كردستان بنساعد الاهلنا النازحين اليزيدية والكلدان والسريان والآشوريين وكل أصناف الـ الـ البيت العراقي العراقيين هم مثل باقة ورد الأحمر والأبيض والأصفر الكلدان والسريان والآشوريين والأكراد والعرب كلهم موجودين في هالباقة الورد اللي كلها كلنا نحب العراق ونموت من أجل العراق أكيد أنا رح أرجع بس رح أكد على مستر مظلوم على اللي قاله أول شيء بحب أتشكر كامي and أسفن ديار and دايما أنا سعيدة إني أكون دايما بشتغل مع مستر مظلوم وبتمنى من العراقي كوميونيتي أو باقي الكوميونيتيز العربية أن نكون أنشط من هيك وبتمنى انه نشوفهم يمدوا يد المساعده لاخواننا وين ما كانوا، احنا المشن تبعنا مو فقط بالعراق ولكن مبدئيا العراق في عنده ماساه بعد ماساه ولكن حتى لما كان في لبنان كنا موجودين، في سوريا كنا موجودين، وين ما الوطن العربي بيحتاج اي مساعده احنا دائما موجودين. 
Oh. With that dot, we'll be signing off because it's a, a long red light is showing for us. Yes. And they are getting now panicky because the live show and the host is also, I think, is already here in the in the studios. So we will be taking off yes. from our and sign off. And next week we'll be back with new guests. Thank both of you, Gada Ahmadani, okay. Madloom, uh, for coming to our show Sukran. and Sukran. giving Sukran. us such Sukran. a news. I'm thankful. Sukran. I'm Sukran. thankful Sukran. to my co-host Kamni Singh, Sukran. who is also the first time in our in show. show. Yes. And God willing, mm -hmm. if time permits, she will be continuing yeah. to co-host our shows. Mm -hmm. At the same time, last week Gada did a co-hosting with me, for which I'm thankful to you. Mm -hmm. You always, okay. both of you, come to my rescue as and when I need. Mm -hmm. So stay well. And I said, God bless Canada. God bless keep, Canada. And keep doing the good job. Yes. God bless. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bless Adios. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.